Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week, Prime Minister the Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips has affirmed the government's commitment to supporting the National Oil Spill Committee, NOSC, to build and strengthen Guyana's mechanisms for oil spill management. PM Phillips stated that the government's commitment during the virtual orientation session of the committee aimed at informing stakeholders of their roles in ensuring effective oil spill management. The Prime Minister also underscored the importance of the committee, noting that the best protection against disasters include preparation and mitigation. Quote, it cannot be ignored that this industry also presents new threats and risks for our nation, which need to be effectively managed to ensure that our resources and ecosystems remain safe. Oil spills, if not addressed adequately, can devastate marine environments and organisms and result in billions of dollars in cleanup and short and long-term recovery costs. End of quote. The exercise also saw the formal launch of the National Oil Spill Contingency Plan. Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony, said the COVID-19 pandemic will not affect the distribution of the filaria pills now that the ministry is entering the final stage of its program to eliminate lymphatic filaria. This is being done through a mass drug administration campaign beginning in February. Minister Anthony said personnel have been trained to adhere to all the COVID-19 measures when visiting communities. We would be able to reach uh, the 70% of the persons that we are targeting. Uh, the ministry, uh, the team that is working on this particular project has spent a lot of time in terms of planning and rolling out that plan. So they have, um, they have a, ro- a rollout that would be in some of the coastal regions and then we go into the interior regions. And we have trained large bodies of people to be able to do so. For Guyana to be certified filaria-free by the World Health Organization, at least 70% of the population must take the medication. That's something that we are aiming towards, but for us to achieve elimination, uh, we really need people to take the tablets. So I'm urging persons to assist us in doing so. Um, It is for your health. It's going to protect you. It's going to prevent you from getting uh, filaria. Um, or what is known as Bigfoot. And uh, I think that's an important thing, that we can actually uh, eliminate this disease from our country. So if we achieve that, it would be one less disease to be uh, worried about. Government will address the concerns of residents of Region 10 in the upcoming national budget. This assurance was given by a minister within the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for public affairs, the Honorable Kwame McCoy, during a ministerial outreach to the region earlier in the week. Minister McCoy was accompanied by Cabinet colleague and Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, the Honorable Charles Ramson Jr. The information they've been able to share with us, the discussion they had with us, would very much, um, we could very much find, based on the considerations and the priorities, many of them in the budget submission, in the budget presentation for 2021. Minister Ramson underscored the importance of the meeting. He made it clear it was not to score political points. The election is over. You have a new government. We have to get on with the business of development. Discussions with residents focused on the need for further infrastructure development in the region and on social issues. Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Zulfakar Mustafa, on Tuesday continued his countrywide outreach, this time engaging residents and farmers of Windsor Forest and surrounding communities on the west coast of Demerara. Minister Mustafa was met with several complaints, including the need for dam repairs and an all-weather road for farmers to transport their produce to the markets without hindrances. The future for agriculture looks great. We will ensure as a government that we provide the necessary infrastructure, we create the necessary mechanism so that you, the farmers, will ensure that you have the supporting um, mechanism 
to ensure that you plan. Minister Mustafa instructed the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority to dispatch an excavator to the district to begin clearing the canals. He also directed that a committee be set up to ensure the work done is to the residents' satisfaction. Prime Minister the Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips has commended the resilience demonstrated by relatives and friends of the 11 Lusignan villagers who lost their lives during a massacre committed in that community on January 26, 2008. On Tuesday, during a night of reflection held to honor the victims and show support for the survivors, PM Phillips told residents government is committed to ensuring such an incident never recurs in Guyana. We are all reminded of these dark times. Not to dwell on them, but to be guided by the lessons learned as a nation and as a government. That such a time as you heard before, such a time must never reoccur. It must not happen again. And that is our commitment. That all our efforts and our resources must be focused towards ensuring that our citizens must never again live in the fear that has been cast over this country during that era. The Prime Minister said although it was a huge cost, the event gives everyone an enduring warning to be proactive and to remain vigilant so that the nation and its people are always protected. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Mohabir Anil Nandlal, who also attended the event with several of his ministerial colleagues, said introspection and reflection is needed to see if the society has learned anything from this sad event. How else can we pay respect and homage to those who perished under such circumstances, if at least as a society, as a people, we don't do that which is necessary to ensure against a recurrence. And have we done that as a society? Not a single person who was responsible who committed the act, neither were the intellectual authors convicted by our legal system. On Saturday, January 26, 2008, gunmen stormed into the village of Luziknan and murdered 11 people, including five children. Several of the children were killed in their sleep. Some $4.4 billion will be spent on infrastructure at Bladen Hall, Vigilance, Plantation, Annandale, Le Bon Intention and Cummings Lodge for housing development. This was disclosed by Minister of Housing and Water, the Honorable Colin Kroll, during an outreach exercise at Annandale on Wednesday. Those are the areas that we are developing the infrastructure work now to ensure that those persons who are allotted for those areas can access and start building. It is intended this year that we'll be spending $4.4 billion on infrastructure work alone for those communities on the East Coast for which we have made allocations for house lots. Work in those communities would include construction of roads, drainage and access to water and electricity. Completion is expected by the latter half of the year. The 16th sitting of the 12th Parliament opened on Thursday at the Arthur Chung Conference Centre with Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Honourable Yu Todd, updating the House on Venezuela's increasing aggression towards Guyana. Minister Todd said Guyana stands resolute in condemning Venezuela's illegal detention of two fishing vessels and 12 seamen who were captured by the Venezuelan Navy in Guyana's waters on January 21. Guyana has strongly condemned the illegal detention of its citizens and the illegal seizure of their fishing vessels by the Venezuelan Navy. As I speak, my ministry continues to engage the international community to resolve this issue in the most peaceful and diplomatic manner. On House Matters, the National Assembly struck down a motion by the opposition to amend the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Control Act through a bill which the government described as inadequate. 
The opposition's proposed removal of penalties from 500 grams or 1.1 pounds of marijuana was swiftly dismissed by the government side, which noted that within the Caribbean, removal of custodial sentences for possession of marijuana has been for no more than 57 grams. Minister of Education, the Honorable Priya Manikchan, said the motion was out of place and was a dangerous attempt by the opposition to derail the process of addressing the possession of marijuana. 500 grams would give you 30, 30 approximately, could be more, 30 spliffs, 30 joints, 30 blunts. 30 joints the size of a cigarette. What is it people want us to address? What is it I personally, and on behalf of the PPPC, and the PPPC as a party would like to see addressed? What is it Mr. Michael Carrington wanted to see addressed? What is it the decent members, if there be any, on the opposition would like to see addressed? We would like to make sure, sir, that persons who are caught are found, I'd like to use the word found, in possession of small amounts of marijuana, be not incarcerated with hardened criminals like murderers and rapists and so on. That is the purpose of trying to address this. Also in the National Assembly on Thursday, Senior Minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, the Honorable Dr. Ashni Singh, tabled two orders to increase the ceiling for domestic and external debts. Minister Singh said the move will regularize the state of the public finances, which was inherited in a state of indebtedness. We have to regularize now the overdraft that was incurred. That necessitates an increase in the, in the domestic debt ceiling. In addition to that, if you look at how much external debt has already been contracted but not yet disbursed, had the external debt that has already been contracted but not yet been disbursed, quite a lot of the space that was remaining within the external debt ceiling would be consumed. The orders seek to have the limit for domestic debt increased from $150 billion to $500 billion and external debt from $400 billion to $650 billion dollars. The orders will be debated at the next sitting of the National Assembly. Minister of Labour, the Honourable Joseph Hamilton, has offered support to the Kirby Community Development Cooperative Society of Region 5. The minister made a commitment during a meeting with the group on Friday. So at the level Board of Industrial Training, we will seek to have training programs happen for the community and at the level of the Corp co uh, Department. Minister Hamilton said his ministry remains focused on providing training opportunities for the co-op societies to effectively manage their operations. One of the failures of co-op is poor management, not necessarily money and faci or facilities. Is you have people who are unable to manage properly, who are unable to market properly, uh, because they might be producing things, but they have no skill to market those things. So those things we will do with all the societies um, uh, through the country. In addition, as the year progresses, interested individuals throughout the country are set to receive training in information and communications technology. Plans are also on stream to retrain retirees so that they can build their communities through new skills. 27 villages in Maruka sub-district Burima Waini Region 1 benefited from a total of $225 million from the government's one-off COVID-19 relief grant. The one-off village grant, which saw villages receiving from $3 million to $15 million based on their populations, seeks to boost economic and social development within Amerindian communities amid the pandemic. Minister of Housing and Water, the Honorable Colin Kroll, traveled to the region on Friday, where he handed over the checks to the Tushaus and senior councillors of the villages. But our government, very early, when we got into office on the 2nd of August, we signaled our intention to ensure that we put systems in place that we can keep our economy afloat and more importantly, for you who are here in the communities that are feeling the effect, the brunt of that effect, to put mechanisms in place so that we can start bringing relief 
to your communities. The villages that benefited from the grants include Chinese Landing, Kokrit, Warapoka, Kwabana, Fathers Beach, Waramuri, Morowana, Santa Cruz, Mora, Parakees, Santa Rosa, and Islands, Kumaka, and Wallaba. Meanwhile, Minister Kroll says his ministry is devising a plan that would see an improved water supply within the Maruka sub-district in Region 1. During the latter part of the year, the ministry, through the Guyana Water Incorporated, GWI, would be dispatching a water well rig to Maruka to start drilling wells in the area. Farmers from communities along the Pomeroon River in Region 2 will soon benefit from an improved drainage and irrigation system with the passage of the national budget, which is expected to be presented in the National Assembly sometime next month. On Friday, Agriculture Minister the Honorable Zulfakar Mustafa and a team of senior officers from the ministry hosted two community meetings with farmers to discuss and bring relief to the issues they are facing. Minister Mustafa said these efforts form part of the PPPC government's holistic plan to advance the agriculture sector. I would also like to inform you some of the measures we have put in place to improve lives for people in our country and more particularly farmers in our country to see how we can improve the condition of the farming community and put measures in place to address the problems that people face in the agriculture sector. During one of the meetings held at the Jack Lowe Primary School, Minister Mustafa disclosed that the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority is hoping to procure a pontoon fitted with two excavators to carry out works in the communities along the Pomeroon River. Fifteen women will commence training at the Carnegie School of Home Economics through fully funded scholarships provided by the Office of the First Lady in partnership with the Ministry of Public Service. First Lady Mrs. Arya Ali and Minister of Public Service the Honorable Sonia Parag on Friday signed the MOU cementing the initiative. We know Guyana will begin to develop rapidly and if equitable opportunities are not provided, it can result in a widening of the gender gap. We must be cognizant of the fact that women are already disproportionately affected. So this gesture seeks to provide women, particularly those who are highly vulnerable, access to opportunities. Minister Parag said she jumped at the opportunity to facilitate this initiative since the women will be empowered to the point where they become independent, and that is what she would like to see in society. The beneficiaries were identified and screened by two locally registered non-governmental organizations, Child Link and Help and Shelter. Prime Minister, the Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips and Chairman of the COVID-19 Task Force, during a live media briefing on Saturday made an appeal to all Guyanese to adhere to the COVID measures put in place to ensure their safety. All of us have to wear our masks. We have to practice social distancing and we have to sanitize as often as possible. The task force has taken an approach where we seek to educate, engage, and encourage all Guyanese to adhere to the measures. And finally, to enforce those measures. Prime Minister Phillips also called on citizens to adhere to the curfew, which runs from 10.30 p.m. to 4 a.m. He noted, too, the importance of following the guideline as it relates to the conduct of businesses. We recognize that while we want you to observe the measures to curb the spread of COVID-19 and to protect and save lives, at the same time, we have to find the right balance and have the economic activities which represents the livelihood of the people, to continue. Also speaking at the briefing, Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony, said a vaccine deployment plan has been developed as part of Guyana's preparation for the COVID vaccine. We have started to make sure that sites in every region are prepared and expanded so that we can store more vaccine and be able to roll that out to the general public. 14 sites right now are um, under expansion. We are hoping to complete that by the end of next week or maybe in the following week. 
and we have also acquired freezers ranging from minus 70 to the regular freezers. The minus 70 freezers, we are expecting to have an additional 15 freezers in country within the first two weeks of February. Uh, we have placed an order for a number of minus 20 freezers. Concerning training, Minister Anthony said 35 teams comprising nurses and other healthcare workers are being trained to deliver the vaccines. Right now, we have conducted a survey in terms of doing the risk analysis about how people might react to vaccines. Uh, what is called a hesitancy survey. We have the results of that, and based on that, we have developed a risk communication plan that as soon as we, uh, just before we start rolling out vaccines, that we'll be able uh, to roll that out. Meanwhile, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Honorable Yu Todd, provided an update on the increasing aggression of Venezuela towards Guyana and the recent seizure of two Guyanese fishing vessels and their crews. When I met with uh, the foreign minister of Venezuela, he did give a commitment that the captain and crew will be treated um, with all international, um, under the international law. Um, their humanitarian rights would not be infringed upon. And uh, our conversations with the relatives here in Guyana um, does not give us any concerns of worrying that they are not being um, treated fairly. Minister Todd said the information being provided by the families of the crew members and out of Caracas does not suggest anything to the contrary. Government continues to provide support to the families of the detained crew members even as engagements continue bilaterally and with international counterparts. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and all the government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.